That is why God made it necessary for you to, you to need the help of one God and other people. He did not want pride to overcome you. He did not want you to fall thinking you can do everything by yourself. He did not want you to become God. He wanted you to worship the one and only God. It is God's plan. There's another thing you need to understand in this regard. When God designed you and your life to be this way, whenever He wants to help you fulfill your purpose in life, whenever He wants to you know, help you, you know, receive blessing and become a blessing to others, He sends people your way to help you. He sends people your way. Not everybody who comes into your life helps you the same way. Some give you good advice. Some help you out with money or other resources. Some help you out by physically doing something for you. Some help you out by praying for you, interceding for you. Some help you out with encouragement. When you're down, they come to you and say, oh, don't bother. And you are charged up one more time. Those encourages are necessary, you know. Those encourages are necessary. And God sends all of these kinds of people your way. But you need to understand something else. When the devil saw that God had a plan to make people whom he sends into your life to be a blessing to you, the devil devised a cunning scheme to destroy your life. You know what he does? He also sends the wrong kind of people into your life. When we read through the Bible, we will come to understand that one of the most physically strong people who ever walked the face of planet Earth was a man named Samson. A ten muscle man. Stronger than Tarzan, stronger, stronger than Phantom. He was Mr. Universe at that time. Long hair, handsome man. When the devil looked at this man, he saw a man that was called by God. He saw a man with a purpose. He saw a man who was anointed by the Holy Spirit. And then he saw all this. The devil did not think, I need to make a man with bigger muscles to destroy Samson. No, the devil knew all it takes to destroy this muscle man who is called by God, who is anointed by God, is one wrong woman getting into his life. One desire. Take us away from the God, Hannah, destined, hallelujah, mark that God has made for us. He knows the people who can distract us from the purpose God has for us. He knows the people who can actually destroy our lives. And the devil is sure going to try his best to bring such people into our life. So what do we need to do? What do we need to do? When we get into this position where we decide on you know, having a new beginning, having a new experience in life, getting new results that will be a blessing for us and we will be able to become a blessing for our people. One great thing that I want to share with you is we need to choose the relationships we enter into very, very carefully. How do you know this? This discernment of relationships starts by firstly understanding that not every person around us is the same. People are different. People are different. There are different kinds of people who are around. What are the different kinds of people, Pastor? Many ask me. Just so that you can remember well, I'd like to classify them under four different signs. You remember those, you know, signs you see in maths? Plus, minus, the multiplication sign and the division sign. Those are the four signs under which we can classify almost all people we see around us. Some people, when they get close to us, you know, they start detracting from us, or subtracting from us. Some come our way, 
and after they go, we suddenly find out we had 100 rupees in our purse before they came. When they went, the 100 rupees is gone with them. Some don't detract from us materially, but they distract from us spiritually. We start talking to them for a little while. We end up gossiping, we end up talking about many things that we just simply regret after they go. And we find them. We do not enjoy that spiritual joy that was with us a few moments back. Who are they? They are the minus people, the subtractors. Then there are other people whom I call the Bibles. Whenever they enter our life, they bring division with them. Good relationships get to be divided. Our focus gets to be distracted. They divide our attention. Dividers. The subtractor and the divider both are trouble for us. We need to flee from them, avoid them to the most. Then there are two other kinds of people. One, I like the additions. When they come to us, deal with us. We get to talk to them or do something together. They bring in some kind of addition into our life. We get some good information. Maybe we learn a new word. Something gets added on. They put a small deficit into us. Those are good people. Good people. Good to grow with. We need such people. Even the encouragement that they give us, you know, it adds on to what we have. But I need you to understand there are you know, still another kind that those are the people I call it, the multi planners. The multi -planners. When we get close to them, when we do things together, when we allow them to pour out something into our life, what do we have? Multi -class. Oh, no. What do we have? Multi -class. Before I close, I just tell you one small you know, story from my own life. You know, one of the best relationships that God has brought into my life is a man I call my spiritual father, my mentor, Dr. Peter Williams. You know, of course, he's doing you. He's led so many in the world in churches. He's got something like 10, 11,000 churches in India now. It is not a relationship I can just simply walk into. It is a relationship actually that God led us in. So our mother organization, the Indian team, they used to conduct a camp for young people called Soul Winners. And there was this camp at Toronto where I was invited to speak. We had a small devotion that started at 8 o'clock. For the next 40 minutes, I had an opportunity to share the word of God with young people who would be in the auditorium. When I was invited, you know what? I was really excited about the opportunity and also very peaceful because of the fact that Uncle just simply wouldn't be there. Had a baby uncle at 8 o'clock would normally be having his walk and coming back for his coffee, so he won't be there for the devotion. That was my habit. But when you know D Day came, I got on stage, took the mic, got ready to preach. I was actually horrified to find the uncle walking down the road, coming into the auditorium, not seating himself at the back, but coming straight and sitting right in the front. He sat down reached into his pocket, took out a small pocket book that he has, took out his pen from here, and got ready to write. And I, knowing uncle, knew he was not there to write notes from my sermon. He was there writing comments. And I'm wondering, what is going to happen, Lord? He started noting down comments. At the end of the sermon, I just you know, simply looked at him and sheepishly smiled, wanted to just simply run away. And uncle handed me three pages of comments. Lot of them. One thing that caught my attention, you know what that is? He was saying, morning, good sermon, good thoughts. And he said, you've got your full sleeve shirt, you know, folded sleeves, and both your sleeves are folded in two different levels. You need to come That's what uncle said. And I said, oh, are you? So many things in the sermon he could have talked about, and this is what he sees. I said, okay, I don't know. A month passed, two months passed. Six, seven months later, there was another soul winner's camp at Palgut. 
I was again invited to speak. And this time, when I got ready to preach, I knew there was a huge chance that Uncle was going to be there one more time. So this time I decided, I'm going to fool him. I'm not going to give him a chance, an opportunity to say the same old kutta you know, one more time. So you know what I did? I just discarded my full sleeve shirt and wore slacks like this. So no issue about you know, folding my sleeves into different levels or anything like that. I got on stage, started preaching, the anointing hit. It went well according to what I thought it. But during the sermon when I looked, Uncle was there in the front seat and he's writing. And I am thinking, Appa, what is he doing? What is he writing about? After the sermon, I smiled at him. He just came, handed me one simple story. That is all there was. Again, it goes morning, good sermon, good thoughts. Third comment. But through the sleeves of your shirt, your armpit was visible. You need to wear a belt. And I said, I, oh God, what can I do to please this man? So many other things he could have told, told me. Why did he say this? Can he not see anything good in what I do? I started thinking. Through the years, every time he deals with me, or every time he is in a meeting that I preach, he gives me written down commands. He talks to me. Sometimes he scolds me. Sometimes I get caught. Why did he not look at the other side? The ten good things I did, he's actually not even seen, I think. But something like 20 years down the line, I want to tell you a simple truth. When I look back, I know I am not where I was once. I praise God for His grace. But also, I want to tell you, my friend, Uncle and his comments have been a great, great, great blessing for me. He's a person who's actually contributed into my life, whereby I would call him a great multiplier. What am I trying to share with you? I'm trying to tell you, multipliers don't always work in the way you think they do. There are not people who will come to you and say, Moni, good, you are looking like the best Sundaran in the world and all. No. They'll sometimes scold you. They'll sometimes beat you. They'll sometimes hurt you. But they'll always mentor you. I need you to understand something. Friends, you know, friends, they love you enough to accept you the way you are. But mentors and multipliers, they love you so much that they cannot leave you the way you are. I mean, if you understand. So who are the people you need to pursue? Who are the, what are the relationships you need to really go after? I would say, you need to go after the and on people and also the multipliers. If you were to choose just one relation in your life, I would say go after the multipliers because even when they inflict pain on your own, it is going to turn out to be a blessing tomorrow. Would you stand in God's presence, please? Let's pray together. Hallelujah. But every heavy close, but every heart be open. Let's just take a moment to huh? talk to God. Tell him, God, I need your help. Without you, God, I just simply won't be able to go forward into the new thing, new experience, new result that you have laid up for me in my life. Let's pray so that God would give us discernment on what we need to change. Let's ask God for the empowerment to do what He wants us to do. I just tell him, Lord, help me. Let's take a moment to pray. Father Divine, I commit all these children into your mighty hands. What you placed on my heart, I find my best to impart on you. I confess, there might have been problems in my communication. My vocabulary is limited, my abilities are limited, O oh God. But I just pray. Even as others, you keep ministering to them by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. 
grant them understanding on everything you want them to understand about. At this point, when I close, I pray that you will keep ministering to them. As they go out of the forest, they get into their houses, sit quietly somewhere, keep talking to them. I just pray that they be given the ability to receive from you what you have been for And having faith in you, having faith in your goodness, your love, and in your ability, I just raise my hand and pray, and I bless them, O God. Make my word a blessing, a cause of blessing for you. In Jesus' name I pray, and all the saints said, Amen. Hallelujah. Brother and sister, thank you so very much for coming today.